Your calculator can be a true friend, helping you get where you need to go in a jam. But even friends can fail you if you don't take the time to understand them. In this lesson, I'll help you build on your knowledge of calculator skills to make sure you keep up your valuable relationship. We'll talk about how your trusty calculator can help you organize fractions and square roots from least to greatest, calculate absolute value, and convert between standard form and scientific notation. Let's start with a question that asks you to organize numbers from least to greatest. Our question reads, what is the correct ordering of 5 thirds, 1 third, square root of 17, pi, and square root of 3 from least to greatest? As always, underline the facts and circle the key words. Label your answer choices with least and greatest. We have what might look like a scary list of numbers. But all we need to do is enter them, one at a time, into a calculator. We'll start with 5 thirds. If you type in 5 divided by 3 and hit enter, you get 1.66 repeating. Write these decimals down so you don't need to keep them all in your head. Now input 1 divided by 3 to find that 1 third is 0.33 repeating. To find the decimal equivalent of the square root of 17, we type the second key, then square root, then 17, and then enter to find that the square root of 17 is approximately 4.123. You might already know the value of pi, but many calculators also have a pi key. On the TI-84, you type pi by first typing the second key, then typing the pi key under the caret key on the right-hand side of the calculator, then enter. Let's make a note that pi is 3.14. Lastly, we can punch the second key, then square root under the x squared key, then 3, and then enter to find the square root of 3, which is about 1.73. Since 0.33, or 1 third, is the smallest number, we can eliminate the answer choices that don't show 1 third as the least. And since 4.123, or the square root of 17, is the greatest, we can eliminate the answer choices that don't end with the square root of 17. That leaves choice A. Easy enough, right? Using the calculator makes the process of ordering the numbers quick and error-free. Now, let's look at finding the absolute value using our calculator. As you may recall, the absolute value is the distance from zero. Most calculators have an absolute value key. On the TI-84, you can find it by typing second, catalog, enter. Let's try this on a mock ACT problem. What's the value of the absolute value of 8 times negative 2 minus the absolute value of 9 minus 16? A is negative 23 b is negative 9, c is 9, d is 11, and e is 23. To solve this with a calculator, we'll input each absolute value expression separately to reduce errors. First, we'll find the value of the absolute value of 8 times negative 2 by typing second, catalog, enter, 8, open parenthesis, negative, 2, close parenthesis, enter. We get 16. Now for the second expression, we need to find the absolute value of 9 minus 16. Hit second, catalog, enter, 9 minus 16, enter. We get 7. Now let's calculate 16 minus 7. This one's pretty easy. 1, 6, minus 7, enter. We get 9. So the answer is 9, choice C. The last calculator skill we'll talk about is how to tackle scientific notation problems. Scientific notation is a convenient way to handle very big or very small numbers. Very small positive numbers are represented using scientific notation with negative exponents. And large numbers are represented using scientific notation with positive exponents. Let's look at an ACT question involving scientific notation. Of the following numbers, which is the greatest? We'll put these answer choices into our calculator and see which number is the biggest. Inputting 3.5 times 10 to the negative 2 into our calculator, we find the value to be 0 0.035. Let's make a note of that to the right of choice F. Choice G is 0 0.00035 times 10 to the 12th. In our calculator, that's 35 followed by 7 zeros. Write that one down next to answer choice G. That's bigger than choice F, so let's cross out F. 
Next, using the calculator, we'll input choice H, which is 350 times 10 to the seventh. Press enter. We find that's 35 followed by eight zeros. If you write this out and line it up with the previous answer, it's obvious that it's bigger than choice G, so let's cross out answer G. Choice J is 3.5 times 10 to the 11th. In the calculator, you'll enter 3.5 times 10 to the 11th. You'll get 3.5 E11. Our clue that this number is bigger than answer H is that the calculator can't actually fit all the zeros onto the screen. Instead, it displays the answer in scientific notation. If you did write it out, you'd get 35 with 10 zeros after it. But for the sake of time, you can determine it's bigger than H and therefore cross out H. Write 3.5 E11 next to answer choice J. Lastly, let's evaluate choice K, entering in 35 times 10 to the 9th using our calculator. We find it's 3.5 E10. E10 means times 10 to the 10th, so choice K is 3.5 times 10 to the 10th. Answer choice J is the largest number because 3.5 times 10 to the 11th is bigger than 3.5 times 10 to the 10th. Let's give you and your trusty calculator a gold star for all that work. In this lesson, we got to know our friend, the calculator, a little bit better. I'm not an advocate for using your friends, but when you're in a jam and need to think quickly, there's no better buddy than old calc. So keep practicing to ensure you and your calculator have a long and beautiful relationship.